My dear doctors, a proud privilege to have uh, with me Dr. Rajiv Dhawan, sir. A uh, warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, wonderful, awesome ENT faculty. Uh, today, we are just trying to give some information regarding the controversial topic, Killian's dehiscence related to Zenkus diverticulum. Uh, may I request Rajiv, sir, to throw some light on uh, this Killian's dehiscence first. Thank you, sir. Uh, this, uh, for Killian's dehiscence, uh, let us first of all see, you know, the pharyngeal muscles. You know, pharynx is a fibromuscular tube from skull base to C6 vertebra. Skull base to C6 vertebra. Now, if you see the extent of the pharynx, it's a fibromuscular tube. It has got three muscles, superior constrictor, SC, middle constrictor, MC, and the inferior constrictor, IC. The inferior constrictor, this one, the third one, the, the green one. Now, inferior constrictor is the house of the Killian's dyssense. Can you see this triangle area? This triangle area represents Killian's dyssense. So, first question is that Killian's dyssense belongs to which muscle? Is the answer is inferior constrictor. Let us go into more detail of this. Actually, inferior constrictor has got two types of fibers. One are oblique fibers, which are called thyropharyngeus, TP, thyropharyngeus. And the circular fibers are called cricopharyngeus. So we know now that inferior constrictor is made up of two types of mus uh, muscle fibers. The oblique fiber is called the thyropharyngeus part and the circular part is called the cricopharyngeus part. Between these two fibers, the oblique fiber and the circular fibers, there is an area, triangular area, which does not have any muscular support. And this triangular area is called Killian's dehiscence. So more refined question as came in the last FMG also that Killian's dehiscence belong to inferior constrictor, correct. But Killian's dehiscence specifically lies between the thyropharyngeus and the cricopharyngeus parts of the inferior constrictor muscle. As you can see, it's a weak area. There's no muscular support to it. So it is a possible site of perforation during rigid endoscopic procedures. Like if I'm doing rigid pharyngoscopy, I must be careful of not putting too much pressure in this area because there's a possible side of perforation. That is why Killian's dehiscence is also called as gateway of tears. Gateway of tears is other name of it. Wonderful. Yeah. And the second clinical anatomy part is that Killian's dehiscence is a possible site of Zancus diverticulum, also called as pharyngeal pouch. And I will request Vineet sir to, you know, lay stress on the clinical story of the pharyngeal pouch. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rajiv sir. And uh, how nicely Sir has explained this natural weakness in the form of Killian stasis. Here in my dear doctors, I would just like to reinforce what Sir has said that uh, as we grow old, we know that the walls of different structures in the body tend to become weaker and weaker. So just imagine this story what Raju Sir has made here that this what you're seeing, these are the circular fibers of the cricopharyngeus, right? Now, if suppose the cricopharyngeal sphincter tone is high, if that is too tight and there is a natural weakness already plus in elderly people this area would become more weak so my dear doctors cricopharyngeal sphincter tight this area weak high pressure in the pharynx will force the posterior pharyngeal wall to outpouch posteriorly and that is what we call as the zancus diverticulum or the other name for this zancus diverticulum is cricopharyngeal ecclesia or we also commonly call it as pharyngeal pouch. Now my dear doctors, as you can see in this particular image, this is how the diverticula has protruded outside. So these patients can present to us with a swelling in the neck, almost in the midline or to slightly onto the left of the midline in the neck, right? Now what can happen better? The food can go into this diverticula, will stay in this diverticula for some time and here the brown structure what you are seeing, this is the food pipe, the esophagus and this is the trachea. So now what can happen if the food is here, this is going to press on the esophagus anteriorly and now the patient will not be able to eat the food properly because the esophagus is compressed. That will lead to dysphagia. That is a classical presentation of Zenkus. 
Also, if the food stays here, it might increase the pressure in the diverticula, which will force this area to throw the food up and there would be regurgitation. And this regurgitation can lead to aspiration and that can lead to pulmonary complications like pulmonary abscesses. Also, if the food stays here for a long period of time, this can lead to helitosis. So, this is how the patients can present to us. So, as sir has very nicely told that the clue to this question will be, it will be an elderly patient, sir. Yeah. And there will be a problem of dysphagia and the food regurgitation and there will be helitosis, sir. And, sir, what investigation would you order for this patient? Uh, when we see these patients, uh, we try to elicit this uh, neck swelling and we can just try to reduce this uh, swelling. And when we are reducing it, the air is getting mixed with water. And when air is getting mixed with water, it produces a characteristic gurgling Gurgling sound. sound. Gurg, 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 gurg. Now, this is possible whenever there is air and water getting mixed anywhere inside the body. And this here, we call it as boy's sign. Mind you guys, it is Boyce's sign. I think sir, spell is B-O-Y-C-E. Boyce's sign and this very interesting overlap, I think. Let me, you know, add on there. The laryngocele, which is a, a large saccule, which is commonly seen in the people who play wind-based instruments. And that is also a neck swelling, lateral neck swelling. And it's an air-filled swelling. When you press that also, the, you know, the leakage of the air can be heard. That sound, hissing sound can be heard. But that, my dear... That is Bryce's sign, B-R-Y-C-E. So Bryce's sign belongs to laryngocele and Boyce's sign belongs to the pharyngeal pouch or Zanker diverticulum. So amazing, sir. That's a wonderful overlap. Great. And uh, uh, what we can do in all patients of dysphagia, generally we try to do a contrast swallow, like a barium swallow can be done. And my dear doctors, barium swallow produces a characteristic image in Zanker's diverticula. Here you can see the contrast is going into the esophagus here. But you can see a nice out pouching in this area. Right? I'll just try to make it a little more clear. Can you appreciate this nice out pouching? This is how Zenkus looks like on barium swallow. And uh, then this is the muscular tube, what you can see. Wonderful. So, and what is the treatment of choice for this particular entity, sir? How would you plan the treatment for this patient? Yeah, uh, in the treatment, sir, if it is a very small diverticula, what we can do is, we know the concept here, that it is due to tight cricopharyngeal sphincter yeah. tone. So, in a small diverticula, we can just make a linear cut on the cricopharyngeal sphincter, relax the cricopharyngeal sphincter, okay. so pressure in the pharynx will go down, One. and uh, this can take care of the diverticula. But, as you have specifically asked, the treatment of choice. So, my dear doctors, what we can do is, with the help of a linear stapler or a bi beaked instrument, what you're seeing here, we can just try to communicate the diverticula with the esophagus. Like Sir is telling us that this is the diverticula, this is the esophagus, there is a septum in between the diverticula and the esophagus. Now, we are just trying to pass this instrument. We are going to take this instrument here and just chop this septum in between. Now, when you chop the septum in between, you will communicate the esophagus with the diverticula. The advantage, food will not be staying in the diverticula. Food would be going straight in the esophagus. No dysphagia, no regurgitation, no halitosis, and the patient's symptoms would be relieved. Is there any particular name for this procedure, sir? Yeah, sir. Uh, this is called as Dolmen's operation. Dolmen's operation, my dear doctor. Right, that's, a, that's a question possible. Dolmen's procedure. A dolmen surgery or dolmen operation is done for the pharyngeal pouch, and you have seen that, sir, has mentioned that this it, you have to use a bi beaked, you know, kind of, kind of instrument over there. So that can be a visual question also. Sir. Thank you very much, sir, Thank for you. throwing a nice uh, vision and light on this controversial topic. I hope the students are definitely going to get benefited by this. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You. May God bless.